Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Ask This Off Grid House. I'm your host, Devin O'Connor, and today's episode is all about tile. So we're here in Northeast PA at the DG2 Chapman Life Homestead, where homeowners Dave and Dana are gonna be tiling the front entryway of their off-grid home. So we're gonna catch up with them now. Hey, Roger, and we're gonna find out how things are going. Hey, Tom, Richard. So stick around and let's see what we can get accomplished today. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Chapman Life. Dana and I wake up every morning and watch Ask This Old House, so we thought it would be a fun tribute to Kevin, Roger, Richard, and Tom to do a fun start to the video this morning. We will be laying a 12 by 24 tile in our front entry room today. This is a really straightforward job. I don't expect too many issues. There's not a ton of cuts other than this little gas standoff in here. I'm not gonna go into detail on how to lay a tile floor. Like I always say, there's a ton of videos out there for you guys to watch if you wanna figure out or learn how to lay tile. What I did do this morning was I put a few of the tiles down on the floor so that I could figure out my layout. Once I got that right, I made a few marks on the walls and floor just so I knew where I was starting. Then I went out and got all my tools together. So everything's laid out, tile saw set up. That way, when I mix up this thin set, it basically I can just get started and not have to worry about running around trying to find materials or tools. When I did lay out those first few rows, I also marked and measured a few of the end tiles so that I could cut these before I got started. That way, I could kind of move a little bit faster on those first two or three rows. Once I get past that gas standoff, it'll be pretty much straightforward out the door. So it just gives me a little bit of a head start. I will be using a quarter inch trowel notch. If you're laying a 12 by 24 large format tile, I would recommend using a half inch or at least a 3 8 inch trowel notch to lay your thin set on the floor. The reason why I'm using a quarter inch is because it gives me the perfect height for both thresholds in this room. Also, I'll be back buttering all the tiles, so I know that I'll get a nice adhesion to the floor even though I'm only using the quarter inch notch. Plus, I've laid a lot of tile floors and I have a lot of confidence in my work, so I'm not too, too worried about this tile floor lasting forever. But like I said, I'm not gonna waste too much time. I'm gonna grab the camera, take you guys outside. We'll get a few things started, and then I'm just gonna set up the camera like I normally do. We'll probably time lapse the ceramic tile going down. So stick around. And we'll rock and roll.
Hey, good morning. So I just finished taking out all the uh, spacers now that the tiles are all set up. I'm pretty sure as usual that uh, my camera either ran out of storage or battery when I was finishing the tile up yesterday. But I know it's probably a little bit tough to see because it's a little narrow in here, but the floor turned out really nice. There's a few spots with a little bit of lippage, um, but I'm not too concerned about it. it you know, I expected, you know, a little bit here and there based on this large style tile, but overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. You probably can't see 100% what the tile looks like, but it's kind of like a gray and white splattered and kind of white tile. And it'll be really nice and since it's like an entry to hide a lot of the dirt, um, you know, and I assume there'll be plenty of doggies in here. So it'll make it nice and easy to clean up when we bring the dogs in. But, uh, now that everything's all set, I set up a lot of the stuff outside to get ready to start grouting this morning and Dana's kind of getting ready right now and I'm going to mix up the grout and I'll go back and float that all in and then Dana's probably going to come back behind me with a sponge and wipe everything off and make it look really pretty. So as usual, we'll just set up the camera and start to rock and roll and um, like my hope is basically to grout it out. And then I just want to wrap this room up. So we'll throw some door trim on, throw some base molding on there, and just kind of keep this room going until we can get it finished. Um, once I can get to the big box store, I'm going to pick up our utility sink and get that all installed and plumbed in. And then we can bring our hall tree in here that's going to sit in here for the time being. So hang tight and we'll get to grounding the tile. Grout's all mixed up, so we're going to give it about five minutes to set up. Um, once that's all ready to rock and roll, I'm going to start grouting, and then Dana's basically going to come behind me, maybe once I'm about three rows out, and then she'll just start using the sponge to make everything look really nice. I'm just using a normal like three by nine float, and then I have a little two inch float to get into some of the hard spots. Um, I like my grout a little more on the wet side than the dry side so that I don't have to use brute force to get it down into the grout lines. Um, so I added probably an extra half a quart of water to the bag. I think it's two quarts to a bag of sanded grout. I used about two and a half, maybe a little less. We're using a DeLorean gray, so a back to the future gray as our grout lines. If they don't come out as dark as we want them, they do make sealers out there that can help tint them a little bit darker. So we've done that in the past too. So if it dries a little lighter than we wanted, we can always kind of darken a little bit with the sealer that we put on. But we're gonna turn the radio on so we got something to listen to. So you're not gonna hear us anymore. We'll just start around.
That's all she wrote, guys. So Dana went back and did a great job cleaning up the mess I made. And we gave it pretty much two or three wipe downs. And now we're just gonna let everything kind of set up for a few hours. And then we'll come back maybe three hours from now and we'll give the floor another wipe down. And then if there's any film left on at the end, we'll use like a cheesecloth or something just to buff out the tiles. But very happy with how it looks and we're gonna move on to the next job. So we'll catch you guys in a little bit. Good morning. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day today. Dana and I, as you probably saw, uh, grouted the mudroom tile floor yesterday morning. And then we, uh, we wiped it down probably twice. Dana went back and cleaned up my mess, like I said. And uh, we headed to a farmer's market yesterday for a few hours. And then when we got back, we um, wiped down the floor again, just to kind of give it a, a good once over. We figure we'll still have to hit it with like a cheesecloth or something to give it like a polished look, but it should be all finished. I thought we'd go up and check it out. Let's take a look. Right, looking good. Let's see if I can get you guys a better look in here. Not bad. Let's see if I can get a better shot this way. I know it's still a little dark this morning, but not bad. I actually went back yesterday and I taped off all the floors and I hit the uh, thresholds with some of that uh, mineral spirits polyurethane mix. I just gave them one coat that actually looks really nice. I'll give them a second coat later today. But yeah, not bad. That looks good. So that's about all she wrote for the tile floor in the mud room. Definitely not a difficult job and it turned out really nice, but we're gonna head out today to pick up the rest of the baseboard I've got the door trim already here, but we're gonna grab the utility sink, some sealer for the floor, and some other odds and ends just to keep rocking and rolling on this room. Until next time, stay fly, and we'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.